Hey movie geeks, I hope you're having a good day. Brian De Palma's Scarface is a cinematic masterpiece that has left audiences in awe for decades. And of course, the climatic ending is a huge part of that. It's a combination that has left such a mark in the minds of movie fans all these years later. Just before we get into it, please consider subscribing if you love analysis and retrospectives for passionate movie geeks. The ending of Scarface is full of violence, desperation, and inevitability. Tony's empire is crumbling around him and his enemies are closing in. He has spent the whole film trying to cheat fate and death, but time has finally run out, and the pressure cooker Brian De Palma has created suddenly explodes in these final moments. Of course, one of the most fascinating parts of the ending is that Tony fights fiercely until his final breath. It's always been a dilemma for me whether to respect Tony's bravery or realise it just shows the depth of his delusion that he still believes even at this point that he will come out on top. I find myself in the middle. It's the interesting position Brian De Palma and Al Pacino put you in when you are watching this character. You don't know whether to root for him to come out on top or root for him to finally be put out of his misery. Tony would clearly fight the United States Army if it came to it, and his final scene perfectly communicates that his ego and delusion could never be kept in check, so things would have always fallen apart for him. He was never able to know his limitations as a human being, and he literally thought he owned the world. While he achieved what he always wanted, he was never able to get any clarity from it and make sense of his life. So of course the end of his life ends up being just as senseless. Throughout the film it is made abundantly clear Tony associated his self-worth as a human being with his wealth and he ends up devoid of happiness and fulfilment because of this. Success and power are shown as incredibly intoxicating throughout the film, especially for someone who came into the world with not much to his name and something to prove. All I have in this world is my balls and my word and I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? Tony's story is very tragic because to be fair to him he didn't have a lot of opportunities to sit back and genuinely assess where his life was going. And of course the film is delivered by Brian De Palma in this fast paced frantic style. Tony's crazy life goes by in a blur and he was never really able to engage in any real self assessment and his delusional vision became even more fuzzy the more success he gained. There's such tension built where Tony is scrambling to load his gun as he sees the men approaching on the security camera. And of course, Tony utters that iconic line that we will never forget as he goes out to face his assailants. Say hello to my little friend. The atmosphere in this scene is at fever pitch thanks to the fast paced editing that creates a sense of urgency and chaos. And we are forced to anticipate that Tony could die at any moment with Brian De Palma's cross cutting showing there are many different threats coming out of nowhere and Tony is truly outnumbered. It's such a brutal shootout, it's not like for example an action movie where our protagonist is able to hide and reload then jump out again. It's literally all happening in front of you there and then. Tony is walking towards his destiny. He's either going to live or die but he's not going to run. And that gives this scene such a cutting feeling. It's raw, it's arresting, it's real. Pacino's mesmerising performance captures the desperation and determination of Tony Montana. He refuses to accept even death, standing there defiantly shouting and fighting the Grim Reaper to the bitter end as the bullets are hitting him and he's just standing there taking it, refusing to die. It's important to remember Tony is indeed the protagonist. Although we have witnessed him do terrible things, De Palma forces us to see him as a human being and he challenges us to understand the toll that his life of violence has taken on him, even if it was self-inflicted. As he is grasping onto Gina when the men arrive to kill him, a little bit of humanity comes out and it's in these moments where we realise if the circumstances and social pressures have been different for him, he might have led a different life because he is in fact not entirely evil. I really miss those films where we had to sympathise with pretty bad people and understand why they end up where they are. It's the character formula that made filmmakers such as De Palma, Scorsese and Tarantino so iconic because they demanded the viewer engage with characters who they would normally objectively condemn. The fact that this kind of film doesn't really happen anymore for me is a huge disappointment. I feel like films of today are playing it safe. When back here they allowed us to understand all sides of humanity and not see everything as black and white. Garface is one of those films that bravely asserts the lines of good and bad aren't as simple as we think, while still not letting Tony off the hook. These characters that blurred those lines were, dare I say it, more interesting, largely because of their flaws. We didn't have to support them and we didn't even have to like them, but seeing them as human was essential. 
In a moment of tragic irony, Tony falls face first into his own fountain. It's one of the most striking images that shows a character's downfall ever. It's a stunning image that symbolises the end of Tony's reign and the futility of his quest for power, as he ends up face down in one of the extravagant things he brought that he thought would satisfy him. The camera slowly pulls out as the grand operatic score starts to play, and it brings such an imposing feeling of finality to what we have just witnessed. That score is haunting. We are shown what has become of Tony's mansion and his lavish lifestyle. All that is left is blood, carnage and dead bodies, including his. The gold sign is still standing that reads the world is yours, and it's very ironic that one of the things that stayed intact from the bullets is this sign. It's almost as if that phrase is looming over Tony and mocking him, knowing he has been fooled. Yes, the world became yours, but it cost you your life. Watching the aftermath of this insane combination, we are glued to the screen, taking in the weight of what we have just witnessed. And the effect of this ending lingers in our minds long after the film has ended. What do you guys think of the incredible and iconic ending of Scarface? And please check out my full analysis of the film on the screen now. Please consider subscribing if you love analysis and retrospectives for passionate movie geeks. And I will see you guys next time.